Excel, the introduction to Excel. Um, please note the session will be recorded so that it can be available for students. And um, yeah, so we'll go through the work bit by bit. I'll start off with the basics of Excel just to explain what we'll be doing and what you guys will be able to do afterwards. Um, if there's any problems, please feel free to use the raise hand option so I can see if anybody has questions or anything as we go along as well. Um, please just make sure that your mics are muted so that you don't interrupt the rest of the class. OK, guys, so hopefully you can all see the screen that's showing the Microsoft Excel document that's being displayed. Um, as you can see, it's just a normal file. I didn't change any settings or any formulas or anything in it yet. So this is basically just raw information that I've typed in that we're going to edit as we go along so you can see how to do the functions. OK, um, first of all, I'm just going to start off by giving a few instructions on Excel and what it is I'm talking about so that everybody knows what it is I'm doing. Um, so Excel is mostly used for data processing. So it's a bit where you're working with large numbers and you have to do calculations and data analysis according to the numbers that you have. The example that I have here is I just used the example of if we're working at Genesa, we will have some students marks for the EUP subject and we're going to do some analysis on these formulas. So that you can just see how to do the basic forms in Excel and basic functions. Right on top of Excel, we get the different menus. So this is where you can see where my mouse is moving on top. Hopefully you can all see it. It's file, home, insert, page loud. I will tell you guys where to go as we're going along so that you know where it is as well. Um, as it is an online thing and not an interaction one, I'll be doing all the work, but you guys can use this file afterwards. Um, I'll submit it on the website as I indicated, and everybody will be able to get the file there as well and the video of today's session so you can go through it again if you need help. Um, under each menu, the part where you see all the icons and all the instructions, this part where my mouse is moving around, this is called the ribbon. So each menu has its own ribbon where you can do what you need to. Now, some of the icons on the ribbon has drop down menus. For example, if you go to the font color, you can see there's a drop down menu. I will tell you guys sometimes I'm going to use the drop down or click on the icon itself. Because if you click on the icon itself, it will perform the default action to what it set at that stage. Where if you click on the drop down menu, you can get different options on what you might want to do. All right. OK. Now, Excel is made up of all of these thousands of little boxes that you see on the screen, the gray boxes. These boxes are called cells. OK. So each cell will have its own data that you can work in. Very important when you're working in Excel is to make sure that you click on the correct cell that you want to work on. The cell that you click on will be called your active cell. So if I click, for example, on that block there, it will get a green border around to show this is now the active cell that you're going to be working on. OK, so always just make sure you're on the right cell before you just start typing. As people does, does have a tendency of just typing, not looking where they're typing, they go over their own work. All right. Now, the cells are made up by column and row headings. Now the columns are on top, so the columns columns will run from left to right. So this is the alphabet A B C D all the way to Z, and then starting again at A A A B A C. Okay. Then the rows is on the side here. They go downwards from one all the way to whichever thousand that you want. Okay. So Excel can be a very large file that you can work on. So this is called the columns and rows. When you talk about a certain cell as well, the cell will have a name. The name will be made up of the column heading and the row number. So if I click on that cell there, it will be show it's an E, and it's row two, so that cell is called E2. The cell name will also be displayed on the left-hand side here on top. This is your naming cell. You can see it shows E2 in that cell there where my mouse is now. If you move to any other cell, it will show that cell name there as well. Okay, so all the cells have their own individual naming. Okay, the next in the naming cell, this part here as well, this is your formula bar. Now, the formula bar will differ from what you see on screen sometimes, because the screen will just show a number or answer, but in the formula bar, you'll actually be able to see the formula that you used. And this is how your assignments is marked as well. 
the program that we used to mark the sums actually check what formulas you have in there to check if it did the right thing. So some students try and do the calculations with calculators, and then just type in an answer and then it's not the right thing. Even if the answer is correct, it will be marked incorrectly because there's no formula included. So it is important that you know which formulas you're going to be using. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to start doing some basic editing on the Excel document itself. As you can see on top, the first heading that I've typed there, this is now in cell A1. I've typed the UNISA Florida Science Campus. I hope you guys can all see this as well. All right. Now, as you can see, this cell that I've typed in is going over into the next one. It's going into row column B and column C as well. So what I've typed in column A is too big for that specific column. Okay. Now, there's a few options you can do to correct this. All right. So one of the things is you can either just make that one column bigger so that it fits in there, or you can actually use a much better function is to combine your number of cells together. All right. OK, I see there is some students putting up their hands. I will give time for questions in a few minutes. All right, so I'll explain a few things and I'll come to the guys with their hands up to answer questions. All right. So what I can do with this heading, instead of just making the one cell bigger, which most people, you can just go on top, click and drag it bigger so it fits in there. Then you get to this situation where you have this big column with all of these open space, which is not the ideal option that you want to have. All right. So there's another option you can do, and this is what I said. You can combine cells. This is called merging of cells. And this is actually one of the things that you'll be, have to do for your EUP assignments. All right. You'll have to be able to merge cells together. So how it works, if you want to merge cells, you have to select cells, all right? You have to select all the cells you want to work with. All right, sorry guys, just make sure you are muted, okay, that you don't interrupt the class. Um, all right, so to combine cells, you first have to select or highlight all the cells that you want to work with. To do this, there's a few options you can do this. I'll always try and explain different ways you can do things. Because everybody has their own way of working in Excel, all right? Whatever way will work best for you. So the first way you can do this to select cells is by using your mouse, all right? So I'll go to the cell I want to start with, which is cell A1. So once I've clicked on cell A1, I click and hold my mouse button, the normal mouse button, and then I just drag in the direction I want to go up until where you want to go. All right, so I've selected all the way from A all the way to F. So this is cell A1 to F1. This is called a cell range. OK, so cell range will be a combination of cells put together. So that's the one way you can highlight. The other way you can highlight is you can click on the cell where you want to start. You just click in the cell in the middle of the cell, for example, cell A1. All right. Then I, you can see I'm moving my mouse freely. I'm not doing anything. You can take your mouse to where you want to stop, which is now in cell F1. Once you're on the cell where you want to stop, you're going to take your keyboard, hold in your shift button on your keyboard, and then click on your mouse. All right. That will highlight it as well. All right, so that's another way of highlighting cells as well. The other option you can do is by simply using your keyboard itself, all right? And you can use your shift button and your arrow keys. So on your keyboard, as you can see, here's a normal keyboard that we'll work on. There's the shift button, and this is your arrow keys, okay? So you'll use the shift button and your arrow keys to do highlighting or selecting of cells as well, okay? So once I clicked on the cell where I want to start, which is cell A1, I'm going to hold in my shift button, then just use your arrow key and highlight all the way to where you want to go. So that's a matter of selecting or highlighting cells. Okay. So once I've highlighted all these cells, I now want to combine these cells together. I want to merge the cells to become one. So simply to do this on your home menu, we get alignment, top of alignment, there you can see you get merge and center. All right. So I'm simply just going to click on merge and center itself. Now you can see this cell has become one big cell. Instead of having all the small cells, instead of having six cells, it's now one big cell. So this whole cell, even if it's going from A to if it's still just known as cell A1, you can see there in your naming box, it's still just called cell A1. All right. Okay, everybody with me up until there, I hope so. All right, I'm going to do this again so you can see it again. Then I'll take a few questions. I see there's one end up. So once again, I'm going to click where I want to start. Highlight from A1, A2 all the way to F2. So I've highlighted all these cells again. I'm just going to click on Merge and Center. That will combine them as well. The nice thing about doing Merging and Centering, it puts your heading right in the middle of all of your work. 
So you don't have to struggle with your heading being separate from the rest of your work. And you can actually see later on, I'm going to show you how you can make these stand out as headings in Excel as well. Excel read them as headings. All right, so I'm going to do the same now to this one here as well. So I'm going to highlight from A3 all the way to F3. And I'm going to merge and center. All right, so that merge and centers all those cells that I have there. Now, these headings are all in the middle of the rest of my work. So it's nice in the middle of the rest of your documents. All right. OK, I'm just going to go to this one person as a question quickly. Uh, I think it's Benil Dutch. You have a question. If you want to ask questions, just unmute yourself. If you don't raise your hand so you can ask the question so we can hear you. OK, good morning, sir. Morning. And everyone. Uh, we are not I'm not able to see your screen clearly. It's too, too small. Can you please try to zoom it so that you can see? All right, I'll zoom it a bit bigger for you as well. Is that better? Yeah, now it's, yeah, All right. it's now better. For you guys you. that's on the session as well, if you want to get the screen to display better as well, where you raise your hand, there's three little dots next to that as well. There's option there where it says full screen and focus. If you click on focus, full screen does make the screen a bit better for you to see as well. OK, so I'll put that on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. So if you're on your Teams option there, there you get the more options. This is where you raise your hand, all right? Just make sure after you've asked the question that you put your hand down as well. There we get more options. You can click there on Focus or Full Screen. That will also make the screen display a bit better for you guys if you're struggling to see, OK? All right, so everybody can see now a bit better, I hope so. All right, thank you for that. All right, so let's continue. So now I've got my headings nice in the sense of my documents as well. I now want this heading to stand out as a heading in Excel itself. So you can see this is a heading. So what most people do when they want to get something to stand out as a heading, they'll go to the options here on top at the home menu, they'll go and make it bold, they make the font bigger, they change the font size, all right? That is fine, you can do this well, but there is easy ways of doing this as well, and they will actually ask you in your assignments to be able to do this well. They'll ask you to change the cell, style to a certain style all right so on your own menu i've clicked on my first thing which is now unisa florida all right here you can see you get styles on top of styles you get these options where it says normal bad good and natural all right next to the last one there's a little drop down arrow there where it says more i'm going to click on more so you can see all the options there okay there's all your different cell styles you can actually choose the cell style that they want and this is one of the things that you might get in your assignments well, where they tell you change the cell style to 20% accent one or heading one, heading two, whatever the case might be. All right. So I'm going to change mine to heading one because that's my first heading that I have in there. All right. Now I can see it automatically makes it bigger, change the font size, puts a nice little line underneath your heading as well. And Excel actually reads this now as a cell style, as a heading. All right. Once we get to a bit more advanced Excel, you can actually see how this is going to help you in doing formatting of certain things. All right. Now I'm going to click on my second heading, which is now EP results. I'm going to go to my style styles again, click on the drop down, and then I'm going to choose heading two. All right. So that one is now a bit smaller than the previous one, but it's still a heading because it's not my main heading, it's my second heading. I can do the same for that one as well. I'm going to go to style styles and change that to heading three. All right, so now I've got my three headings nice and big standing out as headings in my Excel documents itself. All right, now as well, in row five, this is where I now have, if I click on cell A5, you can see it only shows that first part where it shows student and new, but in the formula bar, you can actually see it shows their student number, all right, there on top, you can see the full thing that's in this actually student number, all right. I want the entire row five as well to also be a certain cell style. Sorry. So to change the entire row. So when I mean the entire row, I mean everything from A all the way there to the end where you can't even see anymore. I don't mean just this part that you can see. All right. So I want to highlight the entire row. Now, if you want to highlight the entire row, you're simply going to go to the row heading. So the row heading is the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So the row heading is now at five. You'll see once on there, your mouse becomes an arrow pointing towards the side. OK, if I click on that, that highlights the entire row. So whatever you do now will be applied to the entire row, even to where you can't see off screen anymore. Right. 
I'm not going to go to my cell styles. I want to make this a heading four style. OK, so now that uh, entire row is made heading four. All right. I'll explain a bit later why I do the entire row as well. OK, now coming to my first column, column A. All right. You can see, as I said, student number that I've typed here is too big for the column, so it gets hidden because there isn't enough space for it to be displayed. So I want this to be displayed in full so I can see what's written in the cell. So for this, you can make your cell bigger, all right? So there's a few ways you can make your cell bigger, all right? You can drag it bigger, which is going here to the top of the cell. You go in between A and B. You can see there on top where my cursor is, all right? So if there's B, there's A. If I go in between, my mouse becomes a double-headed arrow pointing to the left and to the right. Once you get that, you can simply just click, hold your mouse, you can drag Drag it bigger until you want it a certain size. You'll see there on top as well, as I'm dragging along, it shows your width and your pixel size, all right? You can see there it shows width is 16.55, pixels is 190. It's important that you know where to find these, because this is one of the things in your sum solver, they tell you edit the cell to a certain pixel size, and this is where you can see it, all right? So this is the one way you can do it, by dragging manually to get a certain size, all right? Or you can set it to a certain size. We can tell the computer, I want it to be a size of 10, 15, 23, whatever the case may be. All right. The other option that you have as well is to let Excel allow you to make it a size that works best for the program. All right. This is called auto fit. So what auto fit does, if I want to auto fit column A, for example, the column that I've highlighted here, if you use the auto fit function, Excel will go down this entire row in this entire column and look for the biggest word sentence number whatever the biggest in that particular column and make it to fit exactly so that it fits in nicely so to do this all you have to do you're going to go to the column heading again all right so this is now column a you see down on top of column a go to the end of column a again like you would did when you wanted to drag yourself bigger once you have that double letters arrow there again you just hold your mouse still and you're going to do a double click so quick double click on your mouse click click and the program automatically makes it big enough, whatever's in there, to fit in automatically. So student numbers the biggest, so it fits it in automatically. That's why it's called auto fit. All right. So just to get back to the mouse here as well, quickly for people that know, this is your normal mouse click, all right, your left click, then you get your right click. All right. So the difference between the left click and the right click is the left is the normal click that you use to interact with your files, links, or the screen item to click, click and drag them. The right click, which is now this side, this is to get hidden options, special menus, and shortcuts, right? I will be using the left click and right click button as I go along. So it's just searching what the difference is between left click and right click, all right? Just searching it. So when I double click, it's the normal click, the left click, that I just clicked twice, all right? So that's just for people that don't know the left click and right click, it's okay. So now I can see student number fits as well. But you can see I've got assignments one in column B, Assignments one is also just too big to fit in there. So I want to make this one bigger as well. And now I'm going to use the option of setting it to a specific size. All right. So to set a column to a specific size, you're going to go to the column heading there on top. So you go to the B. You can see there at B on top. Now you're going to right click. So this is now the other mouse button on that. So you right click on the column heading. And there you get a drop down menu of all the options that you can want to use. So you want to cut, copy, insert, delete, whatever the case might be. They have the option where it says column width, all right? So I'm going to click on column width. So there's my column width. At this stage, my column width is set to 8.55. I know this is quite small. You won't not see this nicely, but hopefully you can see it. So once in the column width, I'm just going to delete what's in there. I'm going to make my column width, uh, let's say 13. I'm just going to type in 13. So this is not 13 centimeters or 13 pixels, whatever. It's just a size that Excel use, all right? So if I make it a column size of 13, you can see assignment one fits in nicely in there, all right? Okay. So now I want to do the same for column C, column D, column E, and column F. I want to make all of them the column size of 13, okay? So, but instead of now doing one column at a time and going right click, column with doing the next one, right click column with. You can do a number of columns in one go as well, instead of having to format one at a time. All right. So how this works, as you highlight itself as well, you're now just going to highlight columns. I'm going to go to the column heading on top, which is column C. I want to start this. I'm going to click as normal on my mouse, click, hold the mouse button in, 
then highlights all the columns that you want to work with. So I've highlighted from column C all the way to column F, all right? So I'm using those four columns. Now, once you've got them highlighted, it's important that now you want to left click to get that drop down menu like I showed you previously, but it's important that you right click on one of the column headings. You can't click right click here or right click anywhere in your screen. You have to right click on your headings on top itself, on the column headings, not the headings that you typed in the columns. So you can right click on anyone. You're gonna right click, they get your drop down menu again, they get column width. I'm gonna change all of them to column size of 13. So this way you can change more than one cell at a time as well, instead of having to do one, one, one individually. All right. Okay. So now I've got everything displaying nicely, all the columns fit. Now I want to start working my documents well. But here you can see I've got assignments one typed in with all the marks for assignment one for those particular students. Okay. But as you can see, I don't have anything there. Time is put in assignment two, assignment three, and assignment four. Okay. Now, instead of having to go there and type assignment two, assignment three, assignment four, you can actually use Excel function to put this data in for you, all right? <coughs> so Excel has a built-in function called autofill, all right? How autofill works? Autofill works with anything related to numbers, dates, formulas, anything related to numbers, basically you can use autofill for, all right? So, Guys, please make sure that you mute your mics, okay? All right, so how autofill works? As I showed you previously, if you click on any cell, it gets a green box around show this is your active cell, okay? So I'm going to click on assignment one, all right, because that's the cell I want to use now, assignment one. Once you've clicked on assignment one, it gets a green border around it. If, but if you look closely, right in the bottom of assignment one on that cell, this little box there, a little square, all right, in the bottom right corner, okay? In the bottom right corner of the cell, we get that box. You see your mouse normally looks like this. I'm just moving around so you can see. It's that white hollow cross, all right? Now, if I go to the bottom of that cell that I want to autofill, you'll see your mouse now becomes a little black cross, all right? Just a solid black cross. So that little black cross is your autofill function, all right? So it's autofill, you click on the original first, then you go to the bottom right corner, you get that little cross, you click on it, hold your mouse button once you've clicked, then just keep dragging. You'll see as I drag on, it shows assignment two, assignment three, assignment four. Once you're up to the stage where you want to look, where you want to stop, you just let go, and it puts in all the information for you. All right, so I'm gonna do that again just to show you. So you first click on the original you want to use, once you've clicked on it, you go to your bottom right corner, get your black cross, which is your auto fill function. Click and hold your mouse, then drag up until where you want to go. And it puts in the rest of the information for you. So instead of having to type assignment two, assignment three, assignment four, Excel puts in all of this information for you. All right. So this makes life much easier and you don't have to do so much work. All right. So it does all the work for you. All right. Okay. Remember, if you want to ask questions, guys, just click on the raise hand option. I'm just going to show it again so that you know where to ask questions. On your screen, you're going to go there where you have that little smile of the hand. You can click on raise hand if you want to ask questions. All right. Okay. Coming back to the Excel file. All right. So now I've got the student numbers, assignments one, two, three, four, all the assignments in there. And I've got all the students mark. Now I want to start with my formulas. All right. So I'm going to do four basic formulas today that you need to be able to do in Excel. All right. You need to know these four formulas before you can do the other formulas they built on top of them. All right. So at the bottom of assignments one, you can see that I've got average mark. So it's clear what I want to do. I want to get the average mark of assignments one, the average mark of assignment two, assignment three, and assignment four. All right. So anybody that's done a bit of accounting or maths knows <coughs> if you want to work out the average you're going to take all of these numbers add them together and then divide them by the amount of people or whatever it is you're working with all right luckily for us in excel there's easy ways to do this they've actually built in formulas to do this all right now whenever you're working in excel with a formula or any calculation the very first thing that you have to put into your cell that you want to work in is the equal sign, all right, to show I'm gonna do a calculation 
or formula. So in my cell, you can see I've typed in the equals, and now you can start with a formula or calculation. Now, all the formulas have different names and things that you have to type in to be able to use them. All right. So for average, if you want to work with the average for any set amount of marks, amounts, whatever the case might be, the formula you're going to put in, you're going to put in equals, then you type in average. As you're typing, you'll see at the bottom there as well, you get this little box of all the forms that you might want to use. All right. So if you don't get this little box at the bottom when you're typing a formula, you must know you're doing something wrong. All right. Otherwise, it would have shown all the forms that you want to use. So I'm just going to continue typing equals average. So that's the formula I want to use. But now I must tell the program from where to where do I want to work with the average for, for what numbers. And to do this, you're going to have to use brackets. All right. So I'm just going to go to my pictures here again to show you where the brackets are. All right. So on your keyboard, a normal keyboard, if you're working on a PC, where you get your numbers. On top of the numbers, you can see on top of number nine, number zero, get your brackets there, all right? So that's your opening bracket and your closing bracket. Now to get to use these brackets, you're simply going to click on the shift key, holding the shift key, and then click the open or closing bracket that you want to work with, all right? So that's how you get brackets into your file, all right? So coming back to my form. So I've typed the equals average. Now I'm going to put in my open bracket to show I want to now start putting in numbers or cells, all right? So once again, a few ways you can do this. You can simply start using your mouse where you want to start. So I want to start there, the first student, click holding your mouse, and then just drag up until where you want to go. All right. You'll see an highlight them with this little screen running around with the dotted lines running around. All right. So that's one way you can put in your cells, okay, by using your mouse to highlight them. If you don't like using your mouse, you can type these in as well. So you can go, you can see I want to start in cell B6. You can type that I want to start in B6. Once you type in the cell name, it will highlight the cell to show you what cell you're talking about that you're referring to, all right? So you can type in as well. After the first cell, now putting a full colon there, all right? Now you type in the last cell, which is now B16, B16. And it will also highlight the entire cell to show you these are the cells that you're working on, all right? Okay, so that's another way you can type in your formulas as well by using your keyboard, all right? I'm just going to type it from the beginning so you can see it. So it's, uh, I can just start there. Equals average, open bracket, the cells you want to work with. All right. So it's from B6 to B16. Now, in the formula bar, you can see it as well. You're on top of your formula bar. All right. So here where my mouse is, guys, if you can see, this is where the formula bar comes in as well. Now, very important for you guys that are doing the online modules. Okay. You can see I've put in my open bracket, all right? I've put up until where I want to go. So I want to go up until B16, okay? Now, there's no closing bracket in my formula at this stage, all right? So you must put in your closing bracket when you're doing your assignments. Okay, guys, it's very important. You have to type the closing bracket, all right? Some programs can actually mark your assignment to see whether the assignment, whether you typed in the closing bracket whether the system puts in the bracket for you. It will see it as auto-correction if you didn't type in the closing bracket. Okay, I'm just going to show you. I don't have a closing bracket in there now, so I'm just going to press enter. So once you're done with a formula, you always press enter on your keyboard to say you're done to do the calculation. So you can see there I get my answer. So the average for sum to one would have been 62. Now if I go back to my formula, you can see the program automatically puts in a closing bracket for you. Okay. So, now when you do your sum, you have to type in your closing bracket yourself. The system can actually see whether it was put in by Excel or whether you typed it in. Okay, so be careful that you put in your closing brackets to make sure that you don't lose marks for not typing in your closing bracket. So you have to type in your closing bracket yourself. Okay, to get your answer. So now I've got my average for assignments one. Okay. So obviously I want to do the same. I want to get average for assignment two, assignment three, and assignment four as well. But instead of having to do this formula in and over by typing equals average and doing all the cells and everything, there's an easy way of doing this as well. You can simply use your autofill function as well. So I did the formula here in cell B17 for assignment one. So once I've did that, I can simply click on it, go to the bottom right again. Remember bottom right, get your little black cross, for your autofill function, 
Once you there, click just all and drag all the way to where it would stop, which is sum four, and we'll do all the formulas for you. All right. So you don't have to sit there and type each formula for everything that you want to. If you did the formula right the first time, you can simply use your auto function to do this for you. Now, if you can see, I'm going to click on each one so you can just see in the formula bar, it shows this is not average for column C. Click on that one in your formula bar. That's average for formula for the column D. All right. So it's a much easier way of doing this instead of having to type them one by one. Okay. So now going to the next formula. Underneath average mark, I now have highest marks. Now I want to get the highest mark that anybody got in assignment one. All right. So I want to see what was the highest mark that anybody got for that first assignment. Okay. Now, now to do that, to do that, you're just going to click in the cell where you want to get the highest mark. All right. Now, if you're working with a small group like this, some students think, oh, all right, I don't know the formula. I'll just check. So let's see the highest mark. Let's see it's uh, 87, 83, 80, 80. Yeah, so 87, so I can type in 87. It will be the highest mark, but you'll get no marks for that answer when the assignment is marked. All right. You have to put in the formula to show how you got to the answer. All right. So once again, working with formulas, first thing you have to do, put in your equals sign. All right. So the equal sign as well, if you don't know where it is on your keyboard, okay, on your keyboard right on top there, next to your numbers, there's the equals and plus sign. You just click on the equal sign there to put it into your file. All right, so equals. Now the formula that you must use if you want to get the highest mark or highest amount in a specific cell range, the formula is max, equals max. So the abbreviation of maximum basically, it's just equals max. So once you've typed in your formula name, you can put in your open bracket again. I want to go from which cell to which cell. I want to go from B6 all the way to B16. Make sure that you only use your cells. Don't include the average now, otherwise your answers will be incorrect as well. Okay. So you must always just use the numbers and not include your formulas that you've used previously unless they tell you to do this. Okay. So once I've typed that, I'm putting my closing bracket. Once I've put in my closing bracket, I can simply click and enter and I'll get my answer. Okay. So once I did that, once again, I can do the auto fill function. I click on the cell, go to the bottom right corner where you get your little black cross, get the auto fill function, drag all the way to assignment four. All right. And now I have all the highest marks for all of my assignments. So as you can see, this auto fill function saves you a lot of time when you're doing your assignments. Okay. Now, Going to the next one, the lowest mark. Same thing, I want to get the lowest mark for each assignment. Working formula, first we do, putting equals, equals. Now, the formula you want to use now is equals min. So the abbreviation of minimum, all right? So I just want to get the lowest mark, lowest amount, whatever, in a particular cell range. Once I've done that, I'm going to put in my open bracket. Once again, from where to where, I right, like from B6 to B16, put in my I'm closing bracket, show I'm doing this work myself. All right, guys, when you're doing assignments as well, it doesn't matter where you're going to highlight the cells, type in the cells, whichever option you use, as long as the cell selection is correct. All right, you will not be penalized if you're using your mouse or the keyboard when you're doing the mouse selection in your formulas. Okay, so I'm showing all these different options so you can just see how to do them. Okay, so now I've typed all of that in, press enter. Once again, there's my lowest mark. You can simply click on it. Get my auto fill function, drag it all the way to assignment four. All right. Okay. So remember, guys, if you want to ask questions, just raise your hands. I will try and answer everybody as we go along. Okay. So now I've got all my average marks, highest marks, and lowest marks. Now, something you must keep in mind in Excel is once you've did these formulas, the answers are there, but these formulas are all active formulas, right? It's well, active formulas, because these formulas stay active the whole time. Don. They're not just done once and the answer will be there. As you work in your documents and you change numbers, your answers will change as well. Okay. For example, let's see the average year was 62, the highest mark was 87. So let's say this student came back and he said, but yes, my son, you marked him correctly. And we check and we say, all right, this guy now is actually 90. So as soon as I change this mark, I haven't pressed enter yet, so it won't be active. 
soon as I press enter, my average will change and my highest mark will change as well. Okay, so as soon as I change that, you can see it automatically updates your answers for you. Okay, so you can see that everything has now changed. It will automatically change your answers as you go along as well. Okay. All right, coming to the year mark now for each student. Okay, so let's say I want to calculate the year mark. So what they might ask you in the they will tell you, calculate the, the year mark for the student. The year mark will be the average of the four assignments combined. All right, I'm taking this from old question papers and assignments that students have done, so you can just see how they'll ask these questions. So they'll tell you, get the average of the four assignments combined. So they just basically want the average of of those four marks to get the year mark. So once again, formula if you want to work out average is you type it equals, type in the formula name which is average, open bracket, I'm not closing bracket, open bracket. Now I'm going to go from where to where. With all of these, when we did the forms, we went from the top downwards, we went down, all right? Now you can go across. I'm starting on the first one. I'm now going across. Now my form is running across the screen, all right? So it's going across instead of going down the screen. So formulas will work either across or down. Doesn't matter in which direction you want to do this. Okay. Once I've typed in my open bracket, closing bracket, press enter. There's my year mark for the first student. Now I want to do it for all of the students. So I can simply click on the first mark there. Go to the bottom right, get your auto fall. I'm going to auto fall to the last student. And there's all of your year marks for all of those students. Okay. Everybody fine up until there. I don't see any hands. All right. So, just to recap on the formulas we did now. The formulas we did now so far was average, work at the average, max, which was to work at the highest mark, and equals min to work out the lowest mark for any particular set of numbers. All right. To show you all the formulas, well, I'm just going to change my screen so you can see all the formulas. So here's all the forms that we did now. So it's Average, max, minimum. Average, max, minimum for all of them like we did. Because we used the auto fall, it automatically puts in all the formulas for us. All right. So this is where your screen will differ from your formula bar as well. If I click on that, it just shows 64. But in the formula bar, you can actually see on top on the formula bar, here's your average, the formula that you used. All right. And this is where they catch a lot of students where they don't know how to use the formulas. So they work out the average their own way using the calculator or whatnot. And they type in the answer, so the answer looks correct on the screen, but in the formula bar, it's not correct, and that's where students lose marks as well. Okay, so you have to use formulas. They tell you to use formulas to do any particular calculation. Okay, everybody cool up until there, I hope. All right. All right, so moving onwards, if anybody doesn't have any questions. All right, let's say I've got my year marks here as well. Okay. But let's say they tell you they want a certain thing to be to show the decimal values as well, all right? Because obviously, if you're doing any calculation, don't just always come to a solid number. You might have fractions, decimal numbers at the back. So if you want to change anything to decimal numbers, if it doesn't display in decimal numbers, you'll highlight the numbers you want to use, all right? Now, on your home menu, you get clipboard, fund, alignment, number, all right? Everybody see numbers here on top, hopefully. On numbers, there's those two options there. It's zeros with arrows pointing left and right, all right? If you hold your cursor still over, it will actually show this is to increase decimals or to decrease decimals. So in your sum, they might tell you format your cell range to be a two decimal value. So I want to add decimals, so I'm going to click on it, and that will simply put in your decimal values for you. So that's what the numbers was before I took all the decimals away as well, all right? So the same goes, they tell you they want this to be with no decimal values, then you can just simply go to the top again. You want to say, I want to decrease my decimals. So either one space or no space. So said, well, at all, and it will round it off to the highest number for you or to the closest number. All right, sticking to mathematical rules. Okay. Everybody fine up? I hope so. All right, still don't see any hands. All right. So the four forms we did now was average, max, and minimum, as I said. And what we did so far is we did merging of cells and cell styles. All right. And how to edit cells so that they the correct size. Now, let's say after you did all of your work, you realize there's another student that you want to add to your list. So obviously, 
there's no space in there. So you have to create space now for this extra student that you want to add. Now, Excel has one golden rule that it will always stick to. All right. This Excel rule is Excel will always work up and to the left. OK, so Excel works up and to the left. We'll see later on once we come to a bit more complex formulas as well, how this affects your editing in Excel itself. All right. So remember, Excel works up and to the left. OK, so if you want to insert a cell, all right, it's quite easy. Let's say I want to insert a cell in between row 11 and row 12. All right, so I want to have a new space in between there. Excel rule is Excel will work up. So, I'll, so I have to go to row 12 because X will work upwards. All right. So to insert a row is quite easy. You go to the row where you want the new row to be on top. You're going to go to that row heading, right click on it. There you get your little drop down menu like we did previously when we did the column width. You can also do the row height if you want to change the row height. All right. But I want to insert a new row. So I'm simply going to click on the insert. That will insert. Insert a row to the top, right? So basically moves that other cell downwards and inserts a new row where you were. All right. So now I've got a blank row in there as well. So I can type in a new student number in there. All right. So I've got my student number in there. You got 84, uh, 68, 47, and 94. All right. Now, once I've typed all of these, you see, as I've typed those numbers in there, the average highest everything automatically adapted to what you're putting in all right this one hasn't changed because i haven't pressed in yet it's still active all right as soon as the cell is still green means it's still active cell it won't calculate it yet now as soon as i press into here, excel is very clever and so no, whatever you type in there you also have to work out the year mark which we've got there so as soon as i press enter it automatically puts in the formula to calculate the year mark for that new student that you've typed in all right so you can see there's the new mark for that student all right it automatically put in the formula for you because you're working in a list. All right. So Excel is actually very nice to work in once you get your formulas correct. Everything's where it should be. It will put in all the information for you. All right. Now, one thing students get confused about as well, they'll tell you an assignment on the worksheet, do this. In this workbook, go to that worksheet and do whatever they want. All right. So Excel is made up of a number of different sheets. You can see at the bottom, I've got sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, and also have a sheet called picks, all right? So you can add as many sheets as you want. Excel can hold up until I think 120 sheets in each document, all right? So each sheet is basically a small little document on its own, a new page, to put it in that with you as well. So you can also rename these sheets like I did with that one to show this is picks instead of just sharing sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four. All right. So to rename sheets, there's a few ways you can do this. Well, I'm going to show you two of these ways to do this quickly as well. So let's say I want to rename sheet one. What you can do, you're going to go to where it says sheet one here at the bottom. You're going to right click. Remember this now, the other mouse button, you right click on sheet one. They get a few options as well. They get the option to say rename. All right, so I can simply click on rename. You'll see it highlights that sheet one. I can delete and I can type in there EUP1501. Now I know this sheet has all the information for that particular subject, for example. All right, let's I want to do the same with sheet two. Different way you can rename as well, guys. Once you're on the sheet, you're simply going to double click. So you're going to double click on the sheet name you want to change. So click, click. We'll see it highlights it as well. You can click on a green name. Let's say this is called sales. All right, so I'm renaming that one to sales. OK, cool. All right, so now I'm on the sales sheet as well. Let me just make it bigger as well for you guys again so you can all see what's going on. All right, so for this one, I've put in numbers again. This is now for a computer shop and it's a sales report for this particular sales shop. All right, OK. Guys, always make sure that you're just all muted, all right? OK, all right. So I'm going to do some of this editing that I did on the first sheet again, so you can just recap and remember what we were doing. All right, so once again, I want to combine my heading so that it becomes given big one in one big cell, all right? So I'm going to take from cell A1, I'm going to click, and I'm going to highlight all the way to cell G. So cell A1 to G1, this is called the cell range, as I said previously, I want to combine Bind them, so combining remember is called merge. So I just click on merge cells. Okay. I want to do the same for the second one. I like that one. 
merge and center. So for the last one, highlight, merge and center. Now they're all merge and center again, making your heading nice in the middle of your document as well. All right. If you didn't want it centered, when you did your merge, you could have clicked the drop down menu. They can choose just merge across, merge cells, or unmerge as well. So if you made a mistake and you don't want to merge anymore, you can just say unmerge and it will take the merging away. All right. So if you did merge and was a mistake, you can easily just fix it by clicking on that option as well. All right. Once again, I want my cells to stand out as heading. So I'm going to click on the first one. Remember now, go to your cell styles, all right? On cell styles, click on the more option. First one is heading one. Next one, I'll change again to heading two, all right? Then next one, I'm gonna change to heading three, okay? Now my heading standing out nicely. Gonna do the same for the entire row five again. Click on the row heading, change that to heading four, all right? Now to start getting my cells to fit in nicely. All right, so this now comes back to your column width that we did on the first sheet as well, so that everything fits in nicely. All right, so the first cell, I'm going to use my auto fit function again. All right, so remember auto fit is where the computer fits it automatically for you to display everything. So to do that, go to your column heading, go to the end of the column where you get your double arrow there on top. All right, you simply double click and it will automatically do it for you. All right, so that's auto fit again. Now I want to change all of these. So let's, I'm going to highlight all of them mm -hmm. from B to G. Guys, please mute if your mic is not off yet, please. All right, once I've highlighted all of them, so remember to highlight the columns, you simply click on the first column where you want to start, hold your mouse button, and highlight all the way to G. All right, going to right click on any column heading. Remember, it's important that you right click on any of the column headings. Get your drop down menu, column width. I'm going to change all of them, let's say to 15. All right. Okay. So now everything's displaying nicely, and I can see everything that should be in there as well. All right. Now, in this column, you can see yeah, I've got January. Next to it, obviously, you need February, March, and April. Okay. So I want to put all of this in there. Once again, we don't need to type this. We can use the auto fill function that Excel has given us. All right, because January is a month, a month is a number, so you can use this as well. So I simply click on January, go to the bottom right corner where you get your auto fill function, that little black cross, click. Now I have February, March, April, simply go. And there's all your headings put in for you. All right. So the auto fill function really comes in, and this will also work if you're working with. Uh, days after week. For example, I'm just going to type it at the bottom just to show you. I've typed in Monday. I want to put in the rest of the week. Just click on Monday again, drag all the way to Sunday, and it will put in all the data for you. All right. So auto fall can be used for months and days as well after week as well. Okay. Now, <clears throat> put in all my information in there. Yeah, I've got average, maximum, minimum, and total per month. I have an open line there. So let's say I've got total per month and you decide you want to take this and you want this total per month to actually be underneath the last name there. All right. OK, so instead of having to retype everything or what you do in Word, you would have said copy, then went there, paste. There's another way you can do this in Excel as well. This is called moving of cells. All right. So you move a cell to somewhere else. So to do this, you click on the cell to say which cell you want to move. I want to move that cell. Get a green box. Remember to show this is your active cell. All right. Once you're on the active cell, you go either to the top or bottom or even the corners. You go to any of the green lines. All right. To show this active cell. You'll see it becomes a four headed arrow. All right. My mouse is a little arrow point there with four arrows pointing up, down, left, right, everywhere. All right. Once you have that, that is to move your cell. You click on it, hold your mouse button. Now you can see I have another green cell going wherever I move it, as long as I hold my mouse button. All right. So you can move it wherever you want it. I want it to be there. Once you're there, just let go and it moves the cell. All right. So you can move the entire column as well. Okay. All right. So I've got all of that in there. Okay. I now want to put in my formulas. But before I start putting in formulas, I want to show that this is not just normal numbers that I'm working with. All right. This is a money, a currency that I want to work with. All right. So I want to change all of these numbers to a currency, 
to show this is money that I'm working. All right. So do, do, do this. I'm going to highlight all of them. All right. I highlight all of my numbers. Now, when you're working with a currency in Excel, it's called the counting number formatting. All right. The counting number formatting. To get this on your own menu, on top of numbers, you get that little icon there. If you hold it there, it actually shows the counting number formatting. All right. So if I click on that drop down list there, there you can see you get your options here. You can change it to Rand, South Africa, Dollar, English, United States. If you wanted other currencies, you could have gone to more counting formats. There you can choose you want pounds or euros or pulas or rupees or whatever currency you want. All right. I'm just going to stick to Rand, South Africa. Click on it. it Automate puts in the Rand or the currency symbol for you and also makes everything two decimals to show that you're working with cents and with money. All right. So remember, if you want to change it to a, to a number that's not just number, but a currency, which is money, you use accounting number formatting. All right. Now I've got all of that in there. Now I'm going to go underneath January. All right. So underneath January, I want to get the total per month for January. So I want to get the total of all of these numbers combined. Now, if you want to add in Excel, the formula that you use in Excel, if you want to add, once again, start with equals. And the formula name is sum equals sum. All right. So sum is to add. Once I've put in sum, put in my open bracket. I've done everywhere that I want to work with. Close your bracket. So it's equal sum B6 to B10. You press enter and you get your answer. OK, so that's how you add in Excel by using the equals sum formula. All right. There's other ways you can do this as well. I'll show you a different way you can do this as well. But I just wanted you to see what the formula is. All right. So the formula to use is equal sum and then the open brackets of cells and close your bracket. All right. So I'm going to delete this quickly. All right. So as you can see another way of doing this, a quicker way of doing this as well. All right. So if you want to get the answer, the sum of all of these, if you want to add off, you're going to click in the empty space that you want to work in. All right. So it's equals there. All right. Now, before I type anything in there, I just simply go to the cell. On your own menu, all right, guys, you're on top. I'm going to go to the ribbon, right to the end almost. Here where it says editing, all right? If you can all see at the end, editing. This option that says auto sum, all right? It's that big symbol that you see. I'm holding this so you can see it, all right? That's your auto sum. As soon as you click on auto sum, it automatically puts in the whole formula and all of the cells for you, all right? So that's auto sum. So you can see the automatic puts in equal sum and the cell range that you work with. So it will take everything that's on top. So auto sum will add everything that's on top of it. All right. So this is where that Excel rule comes in again that it will work to the top. All right. Okay. So Excel works up and to the left. All right. So Excel works up. Once you have it in there, you can simply press enter as well. All right. There you get your answer. Okay. I'm going to delete it again to show you another option to do this as well. Now, a new function that's been brought into the office packages since about three or four years ago is the quick analysis. All right. This is one of the things that you'll get in your assignment as well. I checked your assignments for this semester and quick analysis is one of them. All right. So to use quick analysis, quick analysis actually makes your life a bit easier. You can do a lot of things with quick analysis. So how quick analysis works? Because after I want to get the total per month for January, February, March and April. All right. Yeah, I also want to get the total. So yeah, I want to add the total for all of those again that each person sold. OK, so to use quick analysis, what you do, you highlight all the cells that you want to work with. All right, so which is all of the numbers, all right, for all of the guys for each month. You highlight all of them. Once you've highlighted all of them, you'll see in the bottom right corner there, you get that little icon there. There's a little lightning bolt on top of it. All right, that is your quick analysis. You'll see if I hold it there as so well, it tells you quick analysis. It's very important now to use these. There's about three questions in your assignments that you have to use this function for. All right. So quick analysis. Once you're on quick analysis, you simply click on quick analysis. And there's all of your different options that you can have for quick analysis. So you can do formatting, charts, totals, tables, and spark lines. All right. All of this is done using your quick analysis button. So what I want to do now, I want to work out the totals. All right. So I'm going to go to my totals tab there on top, so I click on totals. Now you can see you get totals. There it shows for sum, average, count, percent total running. There at the end it starts with sum again. If you click on the arrow, there's more options there, sum, average, count, total. So it's the same options. The only difference is 
if you look at them, these ones have blue highlighting at the bottom, all right? The first five days, blue highlighting at the bottom, all right? And the last ones have yellow highlighting on the sides, okay? The reason for this is to show this is where you want your answers to be. Do you want your answers to be at the bottom where it's in blue, or do you want it to be on the side where the yellow is? All right, so I want to get the sum for each month, so that's at the bottom, so there's that option there. You see, if I just hold my mouse over already, it already puts in all of the answers for me. All right, so I can simply click on it and it puts in all the formulas for me. If I go to my forms, you can see it is the equal sum and it added all of those up for you. All right, so that's your auto sum. But now, while I'm still on auto sum as well, while I still have everything highlighted as well, all right, I'm just going to highlight it again. I can use my quick analysis again because I also want to get the totals for each person on the side. So once again, I can just use sum then on the side and I can put it in there as well. OK. And it adds it all up for me there as well. Going to the formula, so you can just see there is sum as well. All right. That's how you use your quick analysis tool and how you use sum to add things in your workbook. All right. Now going to the bottom here again, I'm coming back to underneath January where it says average. I'm just doing this a repetition of what I did on the first sheet so you can see how to the average. So once again, equals average open bracket from where to where I want from there up until there. So it's B6 to B10. And I can simply press enter and get my answer. All right, now I can do the same for the maximum. So it's equals maximum. Remember, maximum is to get the highest number, so it's equals max. Open bracket. Highlight all the cells you want to work with. Close your bracket. Important, always remember those closing bracket guys. Enter, minimum equals min. Highlight, close, and enter. All right, now I've got all of them. Obviously, I want to use the auto fall function, get it to February, March, and April. Now, instead of doing each one individually by clicking on it and auto filling, click on that one and auto filling again, you can actually do all three of them in one go as well. So, to do this, you simply highlight all three that you want to work with. All right, so remember to highlight, just click in the middle of the cell, hold the mouse, and drag downwards. Now, you still get your auto fall function there at the bottom. Click, and I can auto fall all of them in one go. All right, so instead of having to auto for one thing at a time, you can do all your formulas together. All right, once again, you can see these are now normal numbers. I want to change them again to show as money. So currency, that is accounting number forms. Remember, on top of your home menu, we get numbers. The first option there, let's change it to currency. Now we get the average for each rep. So these are the reps. Obviously, it's the average of those four numbers for the four months. So it's equals average. And then my cell range now going across. Once I click that, I can now simply auto fall downwards. And there's all your averages for those ones as well. Okay. See any questions, anybody? Because I don't see any hands coming up or any questions. Uh, if anybody has questions, you can ask questions now really quickly. Yes, anybody? No questions? Okay. All right, guys, but as I said, this is being recorded and I will put it on the website that I showed you at the beginning of the session as well. All right, the, the video will only be up later this afternoon because we just have to edit and get it onto the site as well. But the some video will be there for you to go over again so you can work on your own perhaps on Excel documents and try and do this on your own. OK, tomorrow's session will be for all of this and more. So tomorrow we'll do absolute salary, I think, and I can't remember what else we're doing tomorrow. So I'll just have a look. All right. But we're just going to basically build on top of what we're doing now. All right. Absolute salary reference. Also, one of the things that you need to be able to do for your assignments. OK, so if there's no questions, guys, um, I think we'll be done for today. It's an hour. All right. I stuck to my hour. OK. But if there's questions, please ask as well. You guys do all have my email as well. You can email as well, and I will try and assist as far as possible with whatever queries you have as well. Okay. So if that's all for today, then guys, thank you for the class. And hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow then. Okay.
Thank you. Goodbye.